to me. There are certain genres of anime that I am drawn to, such as action, and psychological, and shonen, while there are others that I tend to avoid, like romance and slice of life. Recently, though, I decided I should expand my horizon, so I decided to ask my friend Animata for some recommendations, knowing that he and I tend to be the opposite when it comes to taste in anime. And well, I got about 20 recommendations from him, but then I explained that I did not want to watch romance for the rest of the year, and I used random.org and narrow down more, I decided that I should watch Toradora. And well, this is what I think of it. The basic elements of Torador have all been seen before. It's a high school romantic comedy, which is certainly one of the more common genres in anime. Of course, just because something has been done before doesn't mean it can't be done in a different way or done better. The main male character, Takazu, is a kind-hearted high school student with a scary demeanor and an obsession with cleaning. Seriously, he is obsessed with cleaning. Look at my room, though. I wish I knew a guy like that. Anyway, we also have our main female character, Taiga, who lives right next door to Takazu. Taiga is a Sundari. I think that's how you pronounce it. Yeah. Anyway, Taiga Sundari. She's someone who is very short-tempered, prone to kicking people, but has a soft side somewhere. What makes the story interesting is that Takazu is in love with Taiga's best friend Minori, and Taiga is in love with Takazu's best friend Kiyomaru. Takazu and Taiga find out about each other's feelings for their best friend, so they try to help each other out, and they become friends in the process. The first thing I like about the show is its comedy, which is really important for a romantic comedy because comedy is in the genre name. Typically, the comedy is due to Taiga's personality and her getting angry at someone, but as a whole, the jokes were quite funny even if they weren't as common later on. Another thing I liked about Horridor is how all the characters were a mix of good and evil, but this was expressed in a way that seemed natural. All the characters are good people at heart. They want to help others, especially their friends, but at the same time, they do selfish things. This is something I really like because of how realistic it is and the way it creates conflict is natural. I think this is one of the benefits of the slice of life genre. It's possible to focus on these everyday inner struggles of the characters, making them feel really realistic. Something else I like is the way they handle the friendship between all the characters. We can see that they deeply care about each other, willing to do whatever it takes to help the others. This created some really powerful moments throughout the show, and we got to see what their friendship was all about. This is especially true when it comes to Taiga, as she sees there are really people who care about her, and that family isn't always the ones related to you by blood. I really liked how this was portrayed through the Christmas arc. Some of the conversations that Taiga had really spoke to the human mindset of wanting to be loved and accepted. I also really liked the cast as a whole. Taiga did take a little bit to grow on me, but once I got to see some of her softer side, I really liked her. Minori is my favorite character from the show, though, just because of how gung-ho she is about everything. But we also see a more serious side to her as well, which really helped to balance things out. The only character I really did not like here is Ami, because she was introduced around episode 5 as an antagonist, but then became friends with the group, and that just fell off. Now, I kind of get what they were doing here, but I think it would have been better not to frame her as a villain at first. Maybe have her distant from the others, and then slowly build the friendship, and that would have been a lot better, I think. Unfortunately, there were a few other problems with the show that made me not like as much as I had hoped I would. For one, there were a few plot holes and plot conveniences throughout the show. They weren't a huge problem though, as it was typically how things were set up, but still, it was annoying. There were also a few moments of forced drama where a character was keeping a secret or run away just to build dramatic tension. And yes, this is a slice of life romance and there's bound to be some drama, but just the way it was handled felt like these characters were being idiots because they needed to make their plot more memorable. Now, you could say it was because these characters are teenagers, and we all know teenagers never act logically, so it could be excused to a degree, but still, it hurt the show more than it needed to. However, the biggest problem with the show is its ending, and as one of my favorite reviewers likes to say, THE ENDING IS PARAMOUNT! While the show does end and wrap up most plot lines here, it did so in a way that felt very rushed and messy. It felt like the studio realized they only had a few episodes to go, so they decided to tie everything together as quickly as possible. But then they realized how rushed this would all be, so they decided they were going to make things super dramatic. There were events happening just for the sake of drama, characters making the most irrational leaps of logic possible, and they were trying to make the story more impactful, but it ended up backfiring. Now, the ending isn't enough to ruin the show, and I'm grateful that the story did come to a conclusive end, but it could have been handled so much better. Overall, the story is pretty good, with the good outweighing the bad, but still. That ending. Animation tends to be one of the hardest parts of an anime for me to judge, especially for a show like Horridor. When I'm engaged with the story, I don't really notice how the animation is presented unless it's something really bad or really great. So I can only say that the animation here was okay. One interesting thing though is at times the character designs here remind me of something out of Higurashi. I don't know what this says about me that I'm comparing Toradora to Higurashi. But anyway. 
There was an action scene here, which I honestly wish lasted a lot longer, and it was pretty cool. The art style seemed to shift a bit here, which did highlight the intensity, but it also felt kind of jarring. Still, the overall solid animation can't complain about. The soundtrack, again, mostly forgettable. The only exception being a piano track, which seemed to be the show's theme, showing up a number of times earlier on in the show, but then would come in at the right moments just to be really emotional and strong. The openings and endings for the show were unremarkable. The shows were catchy enough, but the lyrics didn't really have any substance to them, and the animation wasn't anything that remarkable either. I do like the English dub for the show. I've watched the whole thing dubbed, so I can't really compare it to the sub, but the way I see it, if the English is good that I don't really care about any others, then why am I going to watch the other? Tyga's voice actor did take a little bit to get used to, but I think that was because I was used to hearing her voice in other things, so it just took me a while to get that voice stuck in my head as being Tyga. I do have to say there's a standout performance here by Christine Marie Cabanos who played Minori. She did a really great job of nailing that hyper-energetic side of her, but also the more serious side of her as well. She also did the voice of Maka from Kill a Kill, and the similarities in the voice works well with the similar personalities of the characters. Though Mako is about ten times crazier than Minori, but still, both good characters and good voice acting. If anyone comes to me asking for a recommendation for a romantic comedy, Toradora will be the first one I give them. And not just because it's one of the very few I have seen. If you like romance and haven't seen it yet, go check it out. If you don't like romance but want to give the genre a try, go check it out. It's not perfect by any means, but maybe put everything from this current season on hold so I can marathon it as quickly as possible. Then again, considering the quality of this season, that doesn't really say much. Anyway, on to the final score. Toradora receives an overall score of 7.12 out of 10 and a rating of worth checking out. I really did want to give this show a worth watching rating and thought that I was going to most of the time through it. Unfortunately, those last couple episodes was just so messy that I couldn't. There is a lot to like here, but when the show is building up its entire link to the events at the end, those final events better be done well. So, as I said, if you're interested in romance, check it out, but I'm not going to say go out of your way to watch it right away. Moving on to recommendations. The most obvious one for me is Clannad, one of the few other romances I have seen. Clannad is a harem and spends a lot of his time on arcs for the various characters. It also has some of the most powerful emotional scenes in anime. And that's not even talking about after story. On the other end of the emotional scale, I would recommend Oran High School Host Club. It has the absurd over-the-top comedy that I love, but that's only the start of this great show that you really should check out. And that's everything for me today. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you found this review informative or enjoyable or something, and I will talk to you next time.